It's been about six months since Intel launched your A700 series of graphics cards, and I finally got one. I still use the GTX 1080 Ti from 2017 as my primary card, so the ARC A770 should be a significant upgrade, or so I thought. For my personal use, I care about many aspects of a graphics card, productivity features, encoding and decoding, machine learning compute performance, gaming, and Linux compatibility. We'll start with gaming, because almost everybody cares about that. There's no point in making a benchmark video that's just a worse version of Hardware Unboxed or Gamers Nexus content, so I mixed in some less popular titles because I've got to look where no one else is looking. I tested 1080p, 2K and 4K. To assess potential CPU driver overhead, I experimented with two CPUs, a solid one and one of the best ones you can have. The GTX 1080 Ti serves as a control group in these tests. In Horizon Zero Dawn, the A770 suffers from a significant CPU overhead, causing it to perform poorly at 1080p when paired with a slower CPU. The 5800X3D helped to close the gap at 1080p and at 1440p the Intel card overtook the 1080 Ti. At 4K the A770 beat the 2017 flagship. We observe a similar but less pronounced pattern in Cyberpunk 2077. The Intel card performs poorly at 1080p and benefits more from being paired with a faster CPU than the Nvidia card. At 1440p the A770 can catch up to the 1080 Ti and again it beats it at 4K. In Metro Exodus, a well-optimized DX12 game, the CPU doesn't make a difference and the A770 can claim its first victory across the board, beating the 1080 Ti at 1080p, 1440p and 4K. The performance hit from 1080p to 1440p is relatively tiny. Ceph is not popular, but that's not the point. There surely are more games where the A770 performs similarly. This DX11 game runs horribly on the Intel graphics card and the faster CPU helps combat the driver but the 2022 card loses every matchup against the 2017 graphics card. Again, find a similar pattern in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Performance is not convincing and the faster CPU helps, but the old flagship still wipes the floor of the blue newcomer, even beating it at 4K. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, unlike Odyssey, runs on DirectX 12, and the A770 can beat the 1080 Ti. Even at full HD resolution, performance is on par. Also, note that I only run benchmarks once, so focusing on the tiniest likely run-to-run -run differences is not a good idea. A very recent title, Callisto Protocol, runs fabulously on the ARC A770, and it crushes a team green card at every resolution and then paired with either CPU. I'd be more excited about this victory if I deemed Callisto Protocol a game worth replaying. The A770's success story continues in Hitman World of Assassination. There were no CPU based differences in the Dubai level benchmark and the ARC A770 beat the GTX 1080 Ti by almost 20% at 1440p and 4K. The Metro Redux benchmark wouldn't launch on the 5800X3D and ARC A770. All other combos worked fine, so there may have been an issue specific to my setup. Surprisingly, the ARC card beat the GTX card significantly in this DX11 game. I used the Wolfenstein Youngblood benchmark for my Vulcan test because it was more convenient than the Red Dead Redemption 2 benchmark, which is enragingly annoying to start up and reconfigure after hardware change. Anyway, the A770 slapped the 1080 Ti. The cards performed similarly in Shadow of Tomb Raider with no apparent issues. I believe the latest driver has improved performance in this game, but I didn't test that. I saved the least interesting benchmark for last. Although the A770 was slower than the 1080 Ti in the Rise of the Tomb Raider, the card performed well enough. In summary, in modern DirectX 12 and Vulcan games, the A770 performs well. But we already knew that. Interestingly, Horizon Zero Dawn and Cyberpunk can perform well but scale on CPU performance at lower resolutions. To work that differently, in some games we need a faster CPU to push through what is likely a driver overhead. We also observe this behavior in DX11 games like AC Odyssey and Thief. Benchmarks are helpful, but only tell part of a story, so let's have a closer look. Unless otherwise mentioned, assume I test a game at 1440p resolution, which, based on the benchmarks, is the sweet spot for the ARC GPU. The A770 didn't perform promisingly in the benchmark, but when we dial in the graphics settings a bit, the A770 runs AC Odyssey serviceably at 1440p. This is okay, but the car can run much newer games at that resolution and better frame rates. 
I found that Hogwarts Legacy works best using a high preset and the ultra texture settings using Intel's upscaling technology XCSS on the ultra quality setting. However, when you get the 8GB VRAM model of the A770, you may want to stick to high textures because as you can see here, we're using almost 10 gigs of VRAM. Important to me, the A770 does great in Doom Eternal. At 1080p, on Ultra Nightmare settings with ray tracing, the frame rate hovered around 120. Of course, performance improves a lot when we turn off ray tracing. On the other hand, the Cyberpunk 2077 performance is one of the most disappointing showings for me. Using the high preset and FSR2 balance, the frame rate sometimes dropped to 40, but usually stayed above 50 and reached 60 sometimes. Elden Ring ran at maximum settings at a locked 60 FPS. Based on the report cheap utilization, I assume that the A770's smaller sibling, the A750, could also do this. 4K is possible, but it won't be a 60 FPS experience, more like 40. I don't play Genshin Impact, but I wanted to know how it would do at 4K max settings. The A770 pushed a locked 60 FPS. The game uses very little VRAM and seems highly aggressive with its level of detail and draw distance. I also tested Red Dead Redemption 2 at 4K with FSR2 quality mode enabled. Using the hardware on box optimized settings, I got 60 FPS in sad and E. Interestingly, Red Dead Redemption 2 doesn't use a ton of VRAM, even at high settings. I want to report that ray tracing doesn't work in Witcher 3 on Arc, but the latest patch, 4.02, which dropped a few days ago, changed that. I published a video on that and will put the card up here. When using the older DX11 API, we see excellent performance in The Witcher. I also test some random indie games to see whether I could find anything interesting, because even new ones often use DX11. Project Warlock 2 ran fine and it benefits from fast CPU. Slime Ranger 2 looks great, but this early access game could use some optimization. Then I tried Tinykin and got this. I tried running it through DXVK, but that didn't help. I'm reporting this issue on GitHub to Intel, and if you're an Arc user, you should also report odd behavior. Linux gaming performance was lackluster. Out of the few games I tested, Doom Eternal and Rise of the Tomb Raider ran well. However, in Cyberpunk there were worrying artifacts in the top left, and performance was, at best, passable. Hogwarts Legacy crashed on launch. I test this using GE Proton 49, Kernel 622 and Mesa 23. I test PS3 emulation on Windows. RPCS3 uses Vulkan, so I expected this to do well, and it did. I ran Heavenly Sword at 5K render resolution, 60fps, no problem. I didn't get playable frame rates in Red Dead Redemption, but that appears to be a CPU limitation. AV1 encoding worked using the latest version of OBS on Windows. I recorded some Hogwarts Legacy gameplay, producing a good quality video. AV1 recording is not yet available on the Linux version of OBS. AV1 encoding also worked using the latest version of FFmpeg. I re-encoded a video I had initially recorded using Nvidia Shadowplay. The encoding was quick and the file ended up significantly smaller. I sometimes work or play around with machine learning, and GPUs are essential for training models, so I hope this would work out and be straightforward to set up. However, I'm still exploring this topic. It may deserve its own video, or no video at all. I used the A770 for about two weeks. It surprised me a few times. Good and bad surprises. I was most disappointed by the relatively poor integration on Linux compared to Windows. Right now, I wouldn't go out of my way to recommend Intel Arc to fellow penguins. For gaming only, AMD is for choice in this price class, and Nvidia is the way for machine learning and content creation. On the other hand, many of the A770's features work on Windows, and I was pleasantly surprised at how well it performed in Hogwarts Legacy and Doom Eternal, even with ray tracing on. Especially results at 1440p were promising. Still, Arc needs a fast CPU to push past driver overheads in some games. If you are a fellow Intel Arc user, I'd love to hear about your experience with your graphics card. If you like this video, click the button and subscribe to increase your chance of the almighty YouTube algorithm showing you my next video.